Hey guys, my name's Evan and welcome to Country View Acres. So today I am up on top of the workshop roof. We're gonna be installing our last set of solar panels. We're gonna be installing them up here on the upper part of the roof. And then we still have room over there if we wanna add some more later. So in preparation for these mounting brackets, I did install additional framing up underneath the roof so they would have something to be able to attach to. So I already have some of the mounting brackets attached to the roof and now I just need to run a string in between those brackets and put the, the rest of the ones in the middle and get everything nice and straight so that I can go ahead and start putting on the rails that the solar panels actually mount to. So on this solar foot, on the bottom there's like a mastic or some kind of caulking. You just gotta peel the paper off. And that's what seals to the roof. It also seals to the screw. It seems to be very tacky and sticky. It wants to kind of stretch. And that's what seals this to keep it from leaking any water. Every once in a while you'll have a roofing screw exactly where you wanna put your foot or your mounting bracket. So you gotta take it out and then you gotta make sure that this sealant is right over that hole when you put it down. That way it doesn't leak. So these brackets are getting placed every four feet and they should be right on top of a truss. So all of the mounting feet attached to the roof just fine except for one. It must have just been off a little bit because the left hand screws missed the 2x4 that I put under the roof for the additional bracing. And that was my mistake right there. I shouldn't have used 2x4s. They are actually the exact same width as the mounting feet that go on the roof. So I should have used a 2x6. It would have had a wider surface area for that to be able to mount to. So I'm gonna have to get back up in the ceiling. I'm gonna have to take the two by four out, replace it with a two by six. And then I think we'll be able to have all four screws attached like they should be. So I can see the screws were right there that missed. So this time I'm mounting the solar panels on the Iron Ridge mounting system. This is a 14 foot long aluminum rail. And uh, you can tell it's just very, very lightweight. And um, this is what my local electrical supply house carried. Um, it's a very popular brand. You see people use it all the time. So my supply house is Kirby Risk and they're actually all through the Midwest. So they carry this in their warehouse. And when I ordered it, it basically showed up at the store like next day. And I didn't have to pay freight or nothing. So it actually saved me a lot of money to just go through the local electrical supply and order the railing that way. Last time I, I paid freight, it just ended up costing me a lot of money. This was the, definitely the route to go. And to attach the railing to the roof, you have to have this L bracket, so it mounts to the foot and then the railing mounts to the side. So being aluminum, you can cut this on a regular carbide saw blade. Yeah. 
So to connect two rails together, you have this splice and it just inserts in the end. And then stick the other side in. And they're connected together. I'm gonna go ahead and make my conduit penetration in the roof. I'm just gonna drill through one of these purlins. That way I've got something solid to mount the, uh, the little piece of flashing that goes around the conduit. And we're through. All right, we got our conduit in. It's gonna be just below the solar panel. I've already got my connections out here, my positive and negative. And then I have my ground wire that I need to attach to both sets of rails. So now I just gotta go inside and I'm going to secure this conduit with some conduit clamps and that's gonna make sure this is all nice and rigid. There's also gonna be a junction box on the inside because I can easily access this from inside the garage with a ladder. So I think it's just better that I put it inside because that's easier to get to than removing a solar panel out here. Most of the time, your junction box is actually outside under the solar panel, but I'm gonna do this in a little different. So it's been a week since I got the mounting system up on the roof. And I've got everything pre-wired back to the, the solar power system, the EP cube. So all 12 of these panels that we have, they're gonna go in series to form one big array up on the roof. And when you put those in series, the voltage of the panels add up. So each one of these are 39.9 volts. So add it all together, that's 479 volts. DC open circuit voltage for these panels. But that's okay because this, the system we have, um, the EP cube goes up to a maximum of 600 volts. So as I install these panels today, I do have the rapid shutdown modules that will install onto the panel and will work with the e-stop button. That way, if there's ever any emergency or a fire, if you hit the e-stop, it will drop the voltage on all the panels down to a safe level. All right, we've got our first six solar panels up. I've got another row of six that goes here. So I've got the negative wire attached and then it is positive to negative, positive to negative, positive, negative, all the way down. And then it will connect over to here and go positive, negative, positive, negative, all the way down until we connect up to the positive wire. So this first row, you gotta make sure you get everything nice and straight. And to me, that does look nice and straight that direction. And then looking down here, it looks nice and straight with the bottom set of panels, trying to make sure that everything looked nice and lined up. So the only thing that might be an eyesore is you are gonna see this railing stick out. Being silver on a black roof, you are gonna see it, but we had to go this far so that we could attach to the truss. 
and uh, support the railing on the far end. But in all honesty, that railing sticking out, considering you're gonna be viewing it from down on the ground at that side, you're probably not even gonna see that railing. You might have to be in the right spot to even be able to see it. So I don't even think it'll be noticeable. So we're using pallet fork extensions to make them a little bit longer to try to get some extra reach. And then we've got some timbers clamped on here so that the, you know, the solar panels won't slide backwards as we're trying to look, get them up there. So to wire these up, I've got a rapid shutdown module that clips to the solar panel. And it just clips to the metal edge. And this is a dual module, so it hooks to the first solar panel and then it hooks to this solar panel. So to hold the wires in place, I have these clips and they go on the edge of the panel and then the wire clips into them and holds them in place. All right, I got it. So I use a total of eight of these clips. You can see I've tucked them underneath the inside so the wire clips into them, plus they're tucked under the side of the rail. So this is the wire that goes to the next um, shutdown module. And then the other shutdown module is hooked up down here, but all the wires are kind of kept up against the solar panel. And now we're ready to go ahead and lower it in place. So by the time I finished installing these panels last night, the sun was already starting to get behind the trees over here. So I didn't have much power output last night, but I could tell that they were working. But today's gonna be a sunny day. There's not a cloud in the sky. So it'll be a good day to actually see how this performs with the new panels. So before we had 7.3 kilowatts of solar, and then we just added another 3.8. So we have a total of 11.1 .1 kilowatts of solar now. And that is the size that I had planned for this system all along. It's just taken me several months to finally get these last panels up. So when I calculated up how many watts of solar I needed, I did it for the winter time. So 11 kilowatts of solar in December, which is the least sunny month of the year. Um, 11 kilowatts of solar should be able to power my critical loads. That way in an in a, uh, extended power outage, I should be fine. So that should be able to run all the lights in my house, the internet, you know, the TV, the fridges, freezers, hot water, furnace, fireplace blower, and be able to keep the house warm and everything functioning. Now, of course, that's not enough to run, you know, the heat pump or the dryer or the oven. You know, I can't run those big loads, but at least I'll be able to get by um, during, you know, a, an extended power outage with just these solar panels. And in the summertime, 11 kilowatts of solar on a sunny day should produce 100% of the power I need. So right now I think I've got everything sized exactly the way I want it, but I do have room to add one more array. I can go all the way up to about 15,000 watts on this system and I still have room on the roof on that side if I wanna add another array. But right now we're gonna run it the way it is probably for like a year. And for some reason I decide that I want a little bit more, I can still do that. So I've got one thing left to do before I can call the system complete, and that is a generator hookup. So I've got a generator inlet here. This has got a 50 amp plug on it, 
and that 50 amps will be enough to be able to run the house. We'll be able to charge the batteries back up. And this will probably only be used in a very rare situation. Like say you have an extended power outage and you don't have enough sun to be able to, to charge your batteries and run everything. Well, then you can hook up the generator to this and, and keep everything going. So this is a backup for the backup is what this is. May never get used, but I might as well go ahead and install it anyway. And I'm just gonna put that on the wall right here. It should be out of the way right there and then I can plug in a generator out here on the porch if I ever need to. All right, the solar power system is complete. That is one more goal marked off the list this year. And this was probably one of our biggest goals, if not the biggest goal, especially when you think about how much time it takes and how much money it takes to be able to get this all in place. This is definitely probably our, our biggest goal this year and it, it's done. So I'm really happy with the way this all turned out. It, I think it looks good, it's functional, and it definitely gives you peace of mind knowing that if you ever have a power outage, especially an extended power outage, you've got solar panels and you've got batteries and everything's going to be fine. And um, yeah, I th it definitely is nice knowing we have the system and it's going to be nice having a lower electric bill in the future as well. So it's evening time now and the sun is down behind the trees. So we're, we're done making power today. So we ended up making a total of 61 kilowatt hours today. Our average daily use in the summertime is 55. So we made more than what our average use is in a day. So I'm, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now today we didn't use much power at all and we sold 30 of it back to the power company. So we used 31, we sold 30 back to the power company. So uh, low power use day today, uh, but overall everything's looking good today. It's a sunny day. so. It'll really tell over time when you start seeing your partly cloudy days and your cloudy days and you get a good average of how it performs, you know, on, in all weather conditions. So uh, give it a little bit of time and I'll have a better idea, but right now everything looks pretty good. So now I should be able to total up all of my receipts and get a cost of the EP cube and the batteries. I can total that all up for the entire system price. You know, what would it take if somebody's gonna go out and buy this and do it themselves, just kind of like I did. And then I should be able to look at the performance of the system and come up with how long would it take to pay for itself, at least where I live, right? Um, and so how many years before it pays for itself? And of course, after that, all the, the years after that, it's uh, just gonna end up making you money in the end, right? So um, I should be able to come up with those numbers, cover that in an upcoming video along with maybe some things I would do differently if I was to do it again. And um, maybe cover the questions you guys have. So if you have any questions on like the, the system, the setup, the process of putting solar in yourself, put that in the comments down below. I will try to cover it in an upcoming video where we cover the cost of the system. There's a lot of hidden costs in doing this. People probably underestimate how much money there is in wire and conduit and those kind of things. And so there's a lot of hidden costs and I think there's a lot of ways where you can where you can save money and make things cheaper. I obviously, I think I overcomplicated things and my system is gonna end up being a little bit more expensive than what probably a normal setup would be. So hopefully I'll get that all covered in an upcoming video. And But for now, I'm happy that I've got a goal done and now I can move on to try to get another goal done this year so I think that's it for this video, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.